Morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Freedom Life Center. I'm so glad you could be with us today. Well, they're not really with us, are they? Right. Yeah. They're Wish there. We're here. <laughs> Wish everybody could be with us today. We're down here uh, in Florida. We had our anniversary this past Wednesday. It was a great time. At least for me, it was. What about you? Yeah, 26 years. 26 years, yeah. Going strong, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways, it's good to be with you even remotely today. Um, don't think we have really too many announcements today, do we? I don't think so, no. Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, this coming Sunday. Uh, it's going to be Mother's Day. And so as uh, as we usually do, Michelle's going to be sharing that day. Isn't that right? Yes. Do you have anything planned yet? <laughs> nope. Nothing planned yet. <laughs> she always says this right after we come back from our trip to Florida, and you have to put something together, yes. right? Yeah. It's a little stressful, but it'll, it'll all be good. It always comes together. So, yeah, yeah. Good, I'm excited. Good. And then the, the following week, uh, I'm starting a new series I'm real excited about called Soul Strength. And we're going to tackle a bunch of different uh, things on that. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But when we get started, why don't you go ahead and pray like you normally do. And Okay. okay. God, thank you for this day. And I thank you for everyone who is there at church today, um, for our family. And I just pray for Jeff and um, everything that takes place during this service and this conversation that's to be had that you would just bless it use it to touch others and i pray for everyone there just um, to listen to receive to be changed by what they hear today in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. hey and i'm just in a minute thanks michelle mm -hmm. in a minute i have a special guest that i can have with me today he really needs no introduction but you'll see him in a minute but let me just touch a minute on uh, on soul strength um, I want to talk about uh, our inner being, our inner man. So in our series we did, and Carl picked up on it uh, last week as well, the Bible says two commands, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And so I want to pick up on that thing of soul, about your inner man, about uh, integrity, honor, those sorts of things. Uh, that being said, I'd like to introduce my guest now. Uh, he needs, like I said, he needs no introduction. Uh, Jeff is here. Welcome, Jeff. Well, hi, everyone. Yeah. Good to be here. Thank a little, you. Little, little late coming here, yeah, but uh, I know. Are you, are you wearing makeup? Well, you put me in a tough spot after the introduction, being about honest and things like that. So yeah. uh, I'm going to say no comment. But to be fair with that, uh, I thought everybody on TV wore makeup. In fact, I was watching uh, Joel Stein last week, and he had makeup on. <laughs> I'm not so sure this is going to go, going to be that syndicated across the whole nation, but uh, yeah, maybe you could, uh, anybody have anything to wipe well, that off a little bit? I'm, okay. Well, yeah. so, sorry. There okay. we go. <laughs> well, that was a man. So the series is going to be on a soul strength. So I asked Jeff uh, if he wouldn't mind uh, participating with me in this uh, kind of setup, this introductory um, message for the, for the series. And one of the reasons why I did that, you all know Jeff has been my friend for, we've been friends for... Since fifth, since fifth grade? Yeah, since the fifth grade, uh, a long time. And uh, some of the things that, you know, obviously no one's perfect, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to say that any of us are perfect in any stretch of the imagination, but we're all striving to be uh, uh, better human beings, a better version of ourselves. That's what I always say in church, Jeff. I want to be a better version of, of myself today than I was yesterday. But one thing I know about Jeff is Jeff is a man of uh, a man of integrity, a man of his a man of his word, uh, a man of uh, of, of uh, deep character, and so I thought uh, I, from his perspective I want to talk to him about a little bit about that, especially with regards to everyday life. Jeff's a businessman, and uh, you know me being a pastor, of course that's my, I, I deal in this stuff. But somebody in a, in business, I'm sure you meet all different kinds of people, Jeff. Uh, how important, uh, I know how important it is to you, but when you're dealing with somebody, <clears throat> how important is, uh, you know, in making a deal, a business deal, with their soul, with their inner person, their character, their nature? Maybe you can just talk a little bit about that, just to start out, start out. And I guess the, uh, well, that's funny, that's, that's, a, that's a question I wasn't expecting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, I was thinking that, you know, they're making a deal, you know, being, most decisions we make in business, uh, and I think you've even talked about this in prior sermons. We have our uh, guidelines set. We already know what we're going to do. We've made the same decision ten times. Mm -hmm. And uh, once you set your parameters, it's easy to make that decision. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, let me ask you, okay, uh, along with that, because uh, we spoke about this a little bit, when did you, in business, uh, you know, set those things? Or was it in business? Was it early on in your life of how you're going to conduct yourself, you know, when it comes to relationships with other people and so forth? Yeah, I think it's early on. Start, you know, probably the teachings from uh, your parents, yeah. the things you do as a youngster. Yeah. Uh, you know, a story comes to mind that uh, back when uh, Bobby Riggs played Billy G. Jean King in tennis, yeah. uh, I thought Bobby Riggs would win, and then he thought uh, Billie Jean King would win. So I bet one of the classmates uh, $5 on Bobby Riggs. I remember that. Uh, came in the next day, and this was probably seventh grade, mm -hmm. uh, probably 73, uh, some, somewhere in that timeline. Uh, Billie Jean King won the Battle of the Sexes. Yeah. I came and handed uh, yeah. the guy we ate lunch by the $5, and he said, uh, Jeff, what are you doing? He said, I would never have paid you. Yeah. I said, well, you know, that, that's fine. I said, but, uh, you know, I'm going to pay you because that's yeah. the right thing to do. And I would, you know, so please take my $5. Right, right. I wonder what Pete did with that $5. <laughs> no, actually, <laughs> Kevin Williams. If Kevin Williams ever hears the... Uh... <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so I think, you know, those, those types of, uh, um, you know, character traits I've always seen in you. A person who is... Uh, you know, just a man of his word. And um, so we were talking about um, a, a show that we watched called Last Kingdom. And <clears throat> you know, I'm not here to say that, you know, everything in the mo show is right or whatever, but, but my point of it was this. Uh, there's a man in the show, his name's Utrid. I'm sure anybody that watches it, all you ladies out there, you know who Utrid is. Michelle and Roseanne are cheering in the background back there. Uh, but one thing, I was talking to Pete about this, Jeff, and I said, what do you think it is about Utrid that makes him such a strong... Uh, strong personality in this show is it because he's you know so strong and so he's violent and everything and and Pete said I don't think so either I said I think it's because uh, when Uhtred gives his word I mean it's done I, I mean and, and I know we're not talking about the character in there because he was a he didn't worship well, God he worshiped the God I, I like that yeah because we talked about this prior <clears throat> right and uh, and Jeff mentioned using Uhtred as the a man of his word and everybody loves Uhtred I mean, yeah. we all root from everybody roots for him and he's not a good person, right. you know. He's, you know, he's not somebody that you'd want your <clears throat> son to be. Except, yeah. Except, he's a man of his word, and everybody loves him for that. Yeah. And he's a hero because of that. Yeah. And I think uh, so. From 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 my perspective, I, I'm thinking of not so much the show, but when the writers of that show were deciding on how do we portray somebody of a man of, you know courage and honor and respect and he's noble and so so they chose to portray him as a man who uh, he doesn't have to have a contract he doesn't have to shake a hand he just gives his word and once he gives his word it's it's just done it's over with and, and he keeps that no matter what no matter what yeah and you know, and that's that, that is what makes him a great yeah. uh, character in that show and so I think even even you know Hollywood uh, knows that uh, that's a good quality in a in a human being, <clears throat> excuse me, in a person. And so, what, what I'm what I'm gonna try to do, Jeff, is during the uh, the soul strength, I'm gonna talk about, you know, uh, like how, how do we go about doing that? So, if I could uh, throw it back in your court again, in terms of, do you feel like this is something that uh, that you uh, that you constantly uh, struggle is not the right word, but you know, you constantly have to be on your toes to to keep being a, a, that man. Like, in other words, uh, just, just like uh, in working out, right? You can't just work out for a week and expect, you know, that to, be, to go on for a long time, you know, the muscle that you build. You constantly have to kind of keep that up, you know, in terms of this idea of soul strength. I'm talking about, you know, building that. Can you maybe talk about that a little bit? It, it, oh, yeah, everybody has their battles keeping the word. I mean, you get invited to do something, and uh, uh, you have a golf game, and all of a sudden somebody invites you to go fishing. Yeah. Well, you may want to rather go fishing. If you committed to a golf game, uh, go golfing. Yeah, I have no trouble with that. And I, well, <laughs> I made that decision a long time ago. I never take the second. I never take the best invite. The best invite. I always take the first commitment, the first no matter how great yeah. the second uh, invite yeah. may be. It, it used to be a real dilemma. I remember one time I agreed to play in a softball tournament and a golf both on a Saturday. Uh, Come Friday, that was I put myself in a really, really bad position. Right. That was probably the lesson. You take the first commitment and live with it. 
Yeah. Some people take the, the best choice. How many people cancel? Yeah, I know. Yeah. They cancel on it because they get a better option. Yeah. I think sometimes I, I, I see I see people uh, uh, kind of behave like the airlines, right? They overbook. You know, figure something's going to cancel, and then they, you know, then they uh, they can't say yes to everybody, and that's the trouble too. I think, you know, there are some personality types that are uh, people pleasers, you know, and so they 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 do say yes to everybody. So I think that's a <clears throat> in this particular area, that's a tough thing for uh, for some people with their with their given personality to overcome. You know, they don't want to let they don't want to let people down, so they say yes to everything, and then they end up having to let somebody down. And it's even worse than saying no to begin with. It's funny, and that's a great trait. Some of the people, please, those are the, some of the best people we know. Yeah. They say yes to everything. We love them for it. We know they're always there. Yeah. Whatever we ask them to do, they'll always help us. Right, exactly. Uh, until they can't. Until they can't. Until they can't. And then we're, uh, well, and, and I think as we've gotten older, we both uh, realized that uh, some people cancel and some people are, are always there when they always say Always there, if they, there. If they say yes. Yeah. And the people, please, we love them anyway because they're, we know their intentions are good. You know, the, the, Bible, the Bible even speaks of this. There's a passage in the Bible that says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. So I always tell people, you know, they'll, they'll ask me something or we'll be talking about something and they may say they promise. And I go, you know, that, that's really not a, a good thing to have to promise. Because what it tells me is, is that in the past, their yes hasn't been good enough. Right, Uhtred, right, his yes, it's just a done deal. Right. Uhtred never has to say in the show, oh no, I promise, no, this time I'm gonna come through, right? right? If you promise, it's because you haven't come through in the past. And so I think this, this I hope that this series that I'm going to do is going to help, uh, help us in life to, to, to help build character, to do those kind of things. And I think it stems from, well, let, let me just stop there because I'll, I'll get into more of that in the series. But let me just turn to Jeff, uh, before your dad passed away, I believe, you and your brothers got together and wrote a, have a plaque about things I learned from my dad. Can we just touch on some of those, some of those things that are passed on? Like, and I think these are things of integrity and honor and so forth. Uh, you know, some are just business things, and I get right. that. But uh, and how we can, you know, have those in our life. And maybe your dad said them, but I think also your dad lived those things, right? He, he lived those things, said those things, and uh, we, we all try to live those things. Yeah. And the uh, you know, I'll touch on a few of them. The one he said, uh, "Those who play together stay together." Mm which everybody's heard, those who pray together stay together. And uh, that's also true, yeah. but the uh, play together. And the one I know we discussed the other day, we talked about you know, even integrity, like I said, of people. Yeah. Uh, those who don't have the money will never pay you. Yeah. And I told a story about uh, a, a guy in Canada, he owed us money. I went up and visited him, uh, stayed at his house, and I came back and said to the, the family, you know, are we gonna get paid? The family asked me, are we gonna get paid? I said, absolutely. This guy is a man of his word. Uh, I watched everything about him. I met his wife. I met his kids. Uh, everything about him is a man of absolute integrity. A yeah. month later, I fly back up, and uh, I won't mention that, but you know, he haven't paid. He owes more money now. And he put his head down. He goes, Jeff, he goes, uh, to start this business, I borrowed my mortgage my house, borrowed money from my, my parents, Borrowed money from my wife's parents, my brother, my brother-in-law, and I don't have any money to pay anybody back. Uh, and then I—that's my dad came, you know, told me refresh my memory. Yeah. People will not pay; if they don't have the money. Yeah. And he was right. Yeah. You know, if we ended up working something out because uh, the guy was an honorable guy, very honorable. Yeah. You know that. So that brings up something else too: is that uh, so that the Bible tells us. Uh, like not to judge others, right? Now, now, here's the thing about that. Like you have to, you have to have a, a judgment of somebody when I'm going to do it. But the, the, the point is this, the point is, I, th I think, is that we really can't know the heart and soul of another person, right? I always say in church, uh, Michelle knows, she's probably tired of me saying it. But, you know, just because someone's, you know, in church and they're crying and waving their hands, that doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that they are the spiritual ones. doesn't mean that they're not either. My, my point is that you can't know. Or if there's a man in the back of the church, you know, sitting back there, he has a coffee cup, kind of swirling his coffee cup, looking into it while everybody's singing and so forth. Like, you can't know that man's heart. Mm -hmm. And so, we talked about this just a minute ago before we started this, is that, you know, all of us, I think, uh, 
uh, to one degree or another, um, you know, especially like think about dating, you know, putting your best foot forward. You know, we never reveal who we really are, especially at that time. And I think it's a it's a tough thing to be uh, to be vulnerable, right? So how about how about in business? How about how is uh, I think vulnerability is an important uh, character trait. But in business, how does that work in business? You know, you, you mentioned you mentioned those two things, and the uh, the one that comes to mind is you know dealing with people. Yeah. Uh, people are the most important part of anybody's business, especially in manufacturing, because they're the without them that we have. Well, no trailers, or we have no product. Right. Uh, people have their personal problems. In fact, 93 percent of people leave their job for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and that could be drug addiction, alcohol addiction, uh, a divorce. Uh, you having to move out of state, sick parents in another state. But one of the common things we always face there is uh, breakups. You know, somebody having trouble with their wife or girlfriend. I see. And. Uh, because I've had, I always go back and talk to that person. And the first thing they always tell me is how wrong, wrong they've been, something, you know, why, next are explaining. And I always stop and say, you know, listen, no, I am not gonna say anything bad about your, and again, I make sure it's mostly men, but your wife, girlfriend, because more likely than not, you're gonna be back with her two weeks from now. And I'm not gonna be the guy that's like, oh, she's a, what a horrible, what a horrible pro! I can't believe anybody would be like that. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you've been with them for a long time. That, otherwise, you wouldn't be upset. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so there's the one of the you know character. You go back, and there's a way to to rationalize that, and never ever put down the X, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because that's going to be the that's probably going to be. And you know what they all say? Mm -hmm. Oh no no! This time it's done. Yeah. And I can remember last year when you told me it was really, really done. <laughs> right, right, right. And then right. you're back together, and yeah. more likely than not, two weeks get it back together. Yeah. So it's one of the business. And that's tough. I think I think in situations like that is that none of us want to feel like uh, or admit to other people that we have uh, that we have failed, especially in a, uh, an area like relationships. That's probably a hard thing, you know, for people to come and be honest there. And uh, how, about, how about in your dealings with? Uh, um, like in business, because you know, this is the thing. I'm the only person that does, uh, you know, ministry. I'm a professional, you know, uh, pastor. So in, everybody that's going to be listening is like kind of in your situation, right? And you're, uh, you know, out there in the in, in the in the world and working and dealing with people and business transaction and everything. Uh, how does the? Because I believe vulnerability is an important aspect from my perspective, right? To be vulnerable to. I try to be vulnerable to the congregation, let, let right. them know, look, I have the same troubles that you have. As, as, as a business owner, right, how vulnerable, how, is that difficult for you? Is that important to you? It, you know, it is important, I get, and I guess we use the, uh, pe people will come to me, and we have a, everything set up, people manufacture, there's somebody that checks the work. Right. Goes to QC, and the QC will, you know, check the work. And every now and then, some, and they know what to do, they'll come to me and say, Look, this is a screw up. We got we got two choices: pass this along, yeah. or we, it's going to cost us a fortune to stop and throw it away, throw the whole trailer away, basically, and fix right. it. And I always start with: if you're coming to me, you already you, you, you know the answer. You just want to hear me say it. Yeah. You don't want to be the guy that's going to say, "Throw it away, start over." Right. You know, spend the uh, money that we're going to lose money, you know, on the trailer. Yeah. So the decision I made a long time ago, everybody knows how I think yeah, there, yeah. and they still come to me because they want to hear me say it because it's so painful. Right. It's painful for me too, yeah. but I made that decision years ago. Okay, another question for you. Um, so they say that everything starts from the top, right? And so uh, Michelle was joking with me the other day about if I, if I ever complain about something in the church service going long, she said, well, Jeff, it starts from the top. In other words, you mentioned that to me. I go long. So, so that being said, do you see uh, the culture of Globe Trailers, uh, 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 your your culture that you're trying to establish, your uh, the things that you do, a man of integrity, a man of your work. Do you see it like uh, flowing down through your through the company from salesmen to you know different reps and workers and so forth? Do you see that? Absolutely. Like I said, everything flows down. Quality flows down. Yeah. Um, you know, we have one of the safest companies. We just got our uh, workman's comp. The guy called up and he goes, we're the lowest manufacturer of workman's comp, fewest injuries of anybody that he has anybody in town. And uh, 
you know, went out and told all the managers at desktop, none of us walk by anything unsafe. None of right. us see it unsafe. So that starts at the top. Yeah. The, uh, you know, I laugh because the good and the bad things start with the top, from the top. Well, exactly, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, the bad would be, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a kind and compassionate person. Yeah. Uh, somebody can screw up and they come, they'll come and complain and go, you know, you keep, end up keeping everybody, they keep screwing up. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore that costs a lot of money to keep uh, a bad person. But yeah. I don't look at it, you know, as a, you know, a bad person is still a person. You know, when I say a bad person. I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. Someone that makes mistakes or never adapts to quality problem. They keep putting out bad quality. Yeah. They end up sticking around and in fact the QC inspector saying, Jeff, you know, what am I, you know, what am I supposed to do? I, you know, I, I told you three times and it, they keep making it bad. Yeah. I yeah. said, well then, you know, before, how about saying it five times, six times, seven times? You know, three is not enough for me. So, so th that to me is, the, is the, really the true uh, test of, uh, of honesty, integrity, and character. When, uh, when you are actually losing money out of your own pocket, well, that's one thing, losing money out of your own pocket. Because it's easy to have integrity, well, maybe not easy, but easier to have integrity when everything's fine. It's when things are difficult and, and you personally are going to have loss. Right? I think of, you know, our, our ultimate example is, of course, for us, is, is Jesus, right? Uh, you know, ultimately, you know, paying the ultimate price of his own life. Um, and so those things are, I mean, that's, uh, that's, so you said, you know, you mentioned like, well, the, the bad thing about me having compassion or mercy. Well, in, in, I know what you meant, in business, right. right, it's not good business practice, right? Because no one, no one goes into business and has business practices, you know, are going to lose money. But that's, that's something deeper. That's, that's this, the soul of a man. And the soul of a man is way more important than any dollar amount. Right. Wouldn't you agree? Well, and that's true. If I regretted it, you know, obviously I would change. Yeah. If, I did, if I regretted being, uh, giving somebody five chance or six chance, I would change. I don't yeah. regret it. Yeah, it so there, there's, a, there's a... I don't regret it. There's a passage, Jeff, in the Bible where, uh, where Jesus was asked about forgiveness. And he said, uh, he was asked, how many times do I forgive? And he said, and he, they, so he threw out this number, which was this perfect number, right? Like seven times, do I forgive seven times? And Jesus comes back with a, with a, with a statement and really, a statement means just, just never ending. He said 70 times 7. That's how much you forget. Okay. In other words, you just, you, you, that's right. just something that you do. Right. There's no limit you put on that. And so for you, so you have grace and you have mercy. And, and you go as long as you can until, really, until you're, you're, you're actually forced. Oh, they force me to. Yeah, they force you yeah. to. I would go on for, I would go on 70 times 7 right. if I thought I could change the person. Yeah. It's only once I have the understanding, we understand together that we cannot, that will never change. Right, 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 right. How about, uh, how about another one of your dad's uh, uh, sayings? Do you remember any others? Um, well, the, uh, I find the number one is he's, you know, he's the smartest man I ever knew. Yeah. And uh, you don't realize that until somebody's older, but a lot of times right. it's the wisdom. And I probably, it probably should have been the wisest man because of all the wisdom that he had accumulated. Sure. And the nice thing was he was willing to share it. He sat in front of my desk for an hour every day, yeah. asked me questions and taught yeah. me things. You know, one of the things that, that you told me one time that really impressed me uh, about, about your dad is, your dad told you one time that he wanted you to golf once a week with an older gentleman. He said, now, he doesn't see, see business the way I see it, but you, you can still learn from him as well. In other words, listen, I'm not the only, I'm not the only, uh, you know, the only guy around that does business. So you need to learn, a, you know, is, is that right? Yeah, so he was an old guy at the club, had nobody to play with. He was probably 75 years old. I yeah. was uh, 19. Yeah. So I'd play with other people other days, but every Sunday we would meet and have breakfast and he would explain business practice.